Welcome back to Green Lanterns of Man Lanterns. Oh. Help me out, Jordan. You're my only hope. No, sorry, there was this in Astro Suite more like bitching about that. Help me now, how are you? Kinda. So, there you go. This is, this is one of your this is one of your flying stages. They're not that much and they're relatively short, but they're fun enough. They're basically shooters. The thing is that your control, your the visual is uh, instead of being a top down like most shooters, you instead see Al Jordan ass all the time. I do, I, I do, I do believe a better perspective would have. Ah, like a guy named Sinestra, especially all the waves. Uh, yes, Jordan. Mm, allow me. Why, yes, Green Lantern, I did play Star Fox back in the day. Do a barrel. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's nothing new. A lot of games with flying sections like to pretty much take a page from Star Fox. Most famously, Kingdom Hearts. The first one. <laughs> to be fair, to be oh, all right, right, because for free, remember, the the, the gummy ship section for free were actually designed by the team who made Ein Hunter back on the PS1. That's why you get the super boss from... Uh, on that game, and yeah. also an, an, an I handle design for your Gami ship. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, now, now that you mentioned that, yeah, it does look fairly similar to Frigga, to the Cage Frigga Gami ship, I think, the way it works. But can you can you speed up in this? or, or you, Well, this is more like into, I'm guessing this is more like into Space Area, maybe? Like I said, it's more into Star Fox. Yeah. Well, yeah, that works. again, the stages will like for now. This first one is relatively barren, as you can see. But later on down the line, will be you know with more stuff for you to shoot. Basically, the idea is to reach the the ships of a man, the ship of a man hunter, and actually sabotage it directly. There we go. So in the meantime, Jovan. Yes. You already know the answer, but I'll explain more to the others in a second. So, what's your favorite of the of the Lantern Corps? Uh, uh, possibly the Blue Lantern Corps, the Hope. Red Lantern Corps. Um, the, hmm. blue, the Blue Lanterns are technically, well, they're cited to be the most powerful of the Lantern Corps. Oh, I forgot which is considered, but I think so. Remember, each core kind of has its pros and cons for different reasons. So, basically, to explain to Dreams, I am potentially better because I don't know if he knows the Dead Enter and by extension to the audience. With Geoff John's uh, reinvention of Green Lantern Mythos, he introduced uh, the new Lantern core di with different colors. We was a sneak peek of that with the Sinestro Core War event. Uh, which introduced the Yellow Light of Fear, which is the one used in the live-action movie and, for example, First Flight. Um, but... Um, oh, there we go. There we go, now it's getting a bit more tight. Um, but uh, he introduced a couple of new colors that represent different types of emotion to, you know, create uh, the entire spectrum of the rainbow. There's blue for hope, uh, there's the indigo tribe for, I think, being compassion. There's uh, the Star Sapphire, which is purple for love. <laughs> Don't, never mind the fact that there are a bunch of savage killers. Um, wait, if I recall wait, correctly. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Actually, I'm getting confused no, between the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Indigo uh, yeah. Tribe is for love uh, and yeah. Star Sapphire for compassion. All right. Yeah. The Star Sapphires and... were pink and the Indigo ones were more the purple ones for. All right, then. Then there's the Red Lantern of Rage. Um, which, may, by the way, among your forces, may have a cat. Um, yes, <laughs> Dex Star, which is ador absolutely adorable. Yeah. Uh, and then there's my absolute favorite. Uh, oh, I already mentioned the blue of but uh, And then there's my favorite, uh, the Orange of Greed, uh, with only one member, Lark Lisa. That is because uh, the rule of the, the Orange Lantern Corps basically dictates that the owner of a ring will be consumed by its own by its own greed and will be compelled to murder the other member of the core in order to gain exclusive access to the um, to the core to enter core battery and as and as basically the central battery of the entire team and as a result uh, use the particular ability that the orange lantern ring uh, provides and recreated the deceased member 
as constructs, that obey your orders as your minions. Yes, that is that fucked up. That is until Blackest Night, where the Orange Lantern Corps did get another member, good old Lex Luthor. Yeah, well, more on that later. Uh, so, Tia, why is the orange one your Hold favorite? On. Oh. Why'd they send such a small force to invade all of Oa? Also, the boom effect, the Jesus Christ. Jeez, no evil shall escape my sight indeed. Speaking of a central battery, apparently the green one of courage is in danger. On my way. The green one of courage? Well, isn't he like courage or like... The green lanterns represent willpower. Oh, wait, Willpower. Maybe... No, alright, I'm, I'm going with Whittling Kara's head oh, cannon. Wait, 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 come to think of it, yeah, maybe well, it's the blue lanterns myself. that encompass No, no, blue lantern is off, I can tell you that. Yeah. Basically, now you're back on the on the main planet of the green lanterns, you need to traverse to its core in order to purge the man hunters that are trying to... Ah. access the central battery. Okay, 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 so here's the thing about the Blue Lantern Corps. It is the most powerful color, but also the most difficult to master, and needs green nearby to reach its full potential. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of like the equivalent to Final Form in Kingdom Hearts 2. Most powerful, but also most difficult to master. Much like uh, the actual colors, uh, yeah, also another viable strategy is to get to the enemies and just yate them on the stage. Um, much like with the actual color spectrum, the absence of, uh, of the Green Lantern core colors uh, produces the black uh, rings of death, which is in turn is basically visualized by the fact that it will appear when all the, the, the colors, the green core, the, core, the, sorry, the lantern core will wage war with each other. And instead, with the unification of all of them, concentrating all of them in um, in harmony, will produce instead the white light of life. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Which now. is basic. Which is the most powerful thing in the DC universe, as far as I know. Basically, white lanterns are sort of like that 11 o'clock hour power tap-in sort of thing. Literally, something meant to light the darkest hour. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the darkest hour and brightest day are concepts that go back as far to an old Alan Moore story to the point where Alan Moore himself, when those concepts were used, was like, wait, I was just throwing them in a line there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, eventually they got uh, properly retooled into a single event. Uh, but uh, anyway, to, to answer Jova's question, well, like, uh, it's it's very simple, Jova. Orange is my favorite color, as I mentioned, and of all the spectral emotion, greed is probably one that I'm also suited in, uh, for one sense. reason or another. Um, not to mention, not to mention, I kind of like uh, Lara Freeze, which is used not completely for comic relief, but is the kind of villain that, while powerful, is basically also mocked around. <laughs> For good reason, but yeah, I guess it taps into one of my favorite lantern colors are red, blue, and green here. Red is my favorite color. Blue, because, you know, I tend to be a hopeful one. And green, because I sure as hell have a lot of willpower. Just ask anyone who knows me well enough. Rami again, believes what is your favorite color? Green. So, yeah, I guess it will fit that as well. What's what your favorite you, color, Uh, Blue. Huh. Yeah, that 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 fits too. So, well, to, like Sonic himself says to you, it's the coolest color in the planet. <laughs> so I, 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 I got a second. A bunch of um, an organization whose rank, whose uh, rank and duties you do, is defined by what color you wear. It's just basically Space Captain Scarlet. Kinda, just with uh, superpowers. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I superpowers other than being immortal, glibs. So that's what I mean. So, uh, so basically, uh, we got like, uh, like the White Lanterns, the leaders. Okay. Like uh, I the said, White why... Lanterns are more like an emergency protocol because remember, at the end of the day, the Lantern Corps are the police, the space police of the DC universe. Um, so the, the the White Lantern are are really like uh, extreme measure for extreme times, but usually to contrast the Black Lanterns instead. Uh, it's funny because Spectrum and Captain Scarlet also has a police force. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they, they wear black and white. Let me put things into perspective. Last time we saw the White Lanterns, that was, I believe, uh, oh yeah, the Justice League all became White Lanterns. It was that serious. 
Pretty much. Basically, the event Blackest Night threatened the entirety of the DC Universe. It was a big deal back in the day because they hyped it with the fact that, oh, after this, every death is permanent, and then the New 52 happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> and not just that, the, the heroes that got resurrected at the end of, it, on, of that event were just like one or two to throw a bone to the fans, but nothing more. And for some reason, they resurrected Maxwell Lord. For which I don't understand, especially because they used him in a very bad story afterward. Uh, but um, but no, in that event also, uh, since it was an emergency, a crisis, an emergency, um, the the core rings uh, chose new wielders for each of their colors, uh, and uh, amongst the the earth earthlings. Uh, and uh, so basically, you've got a bunch of characters that you already knew gaining the the, 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 the ring powers, uh, the power rings. Um, Lex Luthor got the orange one of greed. Um, Scarecrow gained the yellow one of fear. Uh, Hal Jordan, the green one was already taken already, so there wasn't that need. Um, Ray Palmer, aka the Atom, uh, got the blue one, if I recall correctly. Uh, Wonder Woman got the one of love. Uh, Mera got the, got the red one for some reason. I guess we needed to throw it to someone. Um, and I forgot to actually gain the decompassion one. Oh my god. <laughs> Who's it? What is it? So many dead. I, yeah, basically, that image that you're seeing, the rings floating away, that symbolizes that their owners have died. And I will show my frustration on these boxes. Again, Ryan Reynolds is trying sometimes, but not all the time. It's, it's a bit hard, it's a bit weird. There we go. It's also a bit weird that some of my hunter sounds like Mr. Freeze. I guess. Um, I feel I mean, like... Well, no, hey. the cartoon Mr. Freeze, which... Also, Drew's uh, Wait, again, again, I'm not talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, okay. Re remember, 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 when they were filming Batman and Robin, apparently John Schumacher kept sarcastically saying, you because know, of all the demands from Warner Brothers, don't forget, we're making a cartoon. Yeah, that's the thing. Joel Schumacher, from what I understand, does not seem to look back fondly on Batman and Ah, uh, Jova is not alive anymore. My point is that he did not look back yes on. there we go anyway you I were saying it. before end of a... um shoot, what was it? well okay i, I explained Wait. a bit what happened in blackest night about the oh, new right, ring right, right, bearers right. okay now i remember yeah basically the white lantern like i said is the 11th hour superpower where essentially several heroes were resurrected or brought back from the dead or heck some were uh, knocked out of something basically for context around near the end of it some of the main Justice League members were either dead or, you know, were pretty much taken over by the Black Lantern. Some thankfully mm -hmm. got saved and made into lanterns of their own, but basically around the tail end of it, essentially it came to a point where they had to combine the absolute colors and willpower, which then allowed the original seven Justice League members to eventually become White Lanterns and mop the four with the Black Lantern power. Honestly, Pretty I'll say much. this, I would not be surprised if we eventually get a DC animated movie adaptation off of Blackest Night. Would be cool. It is as like a, a zombie apocalypse, uh, just in a different way when you get down to it. Uh, no, I was telling Joe about this that the resurrections that happen at the end with we how they make no sense. Uh, because sure, they resurrected Martian Manhunter, which is cool and like Aquaman in his original four, but they also resurrected Maxwell Lord, and then they used him for a terrible story afterward. Why? I they, don't get it. It seems like they wanted to try to do interesting things, but then kind of flaked with him. They fucked up with Maxwell Lord already. I'm pretty sure they should have just let him stay dead. But not just that, Jova. Again, they made such a big deal to say that uh, our dad was permanent after Blackest Night, and then after a couple of months, Flashpoint and the, the and the new 52 happened, so who cares, am I right? Well, yeah. 
Thanks to Luke there we go. Birth of Uncian. Did the new 52 once again, thanks to Jeff Johns. Like, don't get me wrong, Jeff Johns is by no means a perfect guy, but he has he, not been... It's the... another guy that needs to be to keep kept in track, so I'm Def sorry. Definitely, but to his credit, he's definitely also the guy to credit with, you know, saving DC from a lot of their more dumb moves here and there. Whether it be redeeming Hal Jordan for reals instead of just making him the Spectre, revitalizing Superman a bit, or, of course, helping out with the DC Extended Cinematic Universe, because, oh boy, was that thing in trouble. He's also the reason why DC eventually realized, yeah, this new 52 thing isn't working, and thus would lead to DC convergence and whatnot. So. That'll be honest, well, like, again, I had no idea why they wanted to tie Watchmen into, into the whole thing, and Doomsday Croc certainly didn't help. The as Thankfully, we seem to have moved from that uh, by the time of his recording, but I haven't checked in a while what's going on at the moment. Anyway, new type of construct that will be used for later. So, a bomb. I'll think something up. Hmm. A portable bomb. There we go, but you can also carry and toss around. Sorry, a hover mine. Whatever. This <laughs> has got a sound kill. There we go. Let me just. There we go. Assigning properly. Basically, you can actually be a bit creative with these. You can just leave them as traps and have the enemy fall into them, or you can just put them there, you know, carry in and toss it around like a football, potentially. It's cool stuff that you can do with them. And a couple of puzzles really require to throw them into the specific objects or holes in order to activate mechanism. Again, the game has a limited selection of the construct and everything, but they get kind of creative in what you can do with them. <laughs> and uh, they actually replicated the cool, you know, uh, fluorescent effect that the construct seem to have, which, you know, make it more appealing to use them. Okay, here's your time mission for the day. Um, destroy all the enemies before the time runs up because we're absorbing the, the energy of the Lantern Core. If I recall correctly, in a second we will start with the Candle. Okay, I don't think I mentioned the, the score, but let me check in the meantime. Because it's kind of generic, to be honest. Somebody definitely likes the drums for the score, I'll let you know. Uh, two composer, Cave Coin and Michael David Nielsen. Let me check because we're not, we do not have a Wikipedia page. Let me check if they have an IMDb one. I feel like I've heard of the Cohen guy. Okay, Michael David Nielsen is not, does not really have that much to say. Kevin Coy, on the other hand, uh, there we go. Alright, I notice... Uh, okay, there we go, Composer. Well, it seems to... he has a decent resume. What's he he worked mostly for TV stars, but video game-wise, uh, let's see what he has. St Splinter Cell Conviction, this game. The Battleship video game, which I also recorded. Uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist, uh, and more recently Forza Motorsport 6 and 7. He's still getting work to this day. Nowadays, he's, he's juggling between video games, shorts, and documentaries. Interesting. Which is cool enough for me. It it's just that the, the music of this game is not memorable, to be honest. Like I said, somebody loves the heck out of drums for the soundtrack. They love to be, you know, try to go for the ambient, uh, but it just not really there we go there's and it's another timer instead it's kind of an export mission because you have uh, the elf bar of the battery central battery when you need to destroy the turrets before they deplete it uh, and i can tell you this even in hard mode this is relatively easy if you know what you're doing you need to focus on the units that are actively trying to destroy the the central battery otherwise you can just focus on the later enemies only later on there we go Yes, I'm getting green. Give me a second. <laughs> I 
You know, Jova, these kind of drum usage reminds me of... Uh, um, the Incredible Hulk 2008. Yeah. Oh my god. It, we do use them a bit there. Both green themed heroes. Actually, could don't I get, think of Don't it? get me wrong, this is a much more enjoyable game than that, but I was just making a passive uh, mention I... about the score. I'll call correctly. There was a time when they had Green Lantern fight the Hulk. I don't remember that. What I do mainly remember is how the outcome between Superman versus the Hulk did in that Avengers... Ver Sorry, that Marvel vs. DC event was. Mm -hmm. Superman won. Yeah. Let's and then see. the Amalgam Universe happened. Let's see, when it came to that, they also had Storm vs. Wonder Woman. Storm won. Uh, I, I think... don't remember much about Marvel vs. DC, Jova, so I cannot tell you uh, much about that. Besides, mm -hmm. as Linkar himself said, JLA slash Avengers is a much better crossover. So... As opposed to them fighting each other, you mean? They still do that, it's just that, you know, it's it's a more organic story that involves both universes on, you know, and threatens them on an equal level. And we, we still fight, but we just do it in a particular way. To give an idea to him, so there's a point where reality starts getting scrambled and the heroes are kind of juggling between different realities where their worlds have mixed up, it makes sense in context, and one of them has both the Justice League and the Avengers at the um, Justice League satellite doing a, a, themed, uh, a themed party, with a Hawaiian party, where everyone wears the hula, including Batman, <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> uh, okay, that said though, Amalgam was also cool. True. Well, like, it was a cool experiment. Like, come on, mixing Batman with Wolverine? Awesome. Mixing Captain Marvel with Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. To that obtain was clever. Captain Marvel. <laughs> mixing Storm with Wonder Woman, that's just a recipe for awesome, even though Diana technically still exists, albeit as sort of a partner to Steve Trevor, who was mixed with the flipping Punisher. And then there was Lobo, Lobo the Duck. Because that was a thing. And I'm sure everyone remembers mixing Superman with Captain America, the ultimate Boy Scout. <laughs> it was glorious. Um, there we go, almost there. I just need to defeat these remaining turrets and the central battery should be saved. I think Flash got mixed with Quicksilver. Yes. Right, yeah. I forget. I forget who won between the fight between Flash and Quicksilver. I think that was the Flash. Um, as for Green Lantern, I forget who Green Lantern fused with. I don't remember that one, actually. There what was go. your favorite amalgamation? Uh, Lobo the Duck. Remember, uh, Joe, I kinda, I kinda grew up with our the Duck stories, so... And Lobo is actually one of my favorite DC characters, so there's that too. Nice. I heard that the, the, more, the most recent DC animated movie um, Superman the Man of Tomorrow actually is a global story in disguise, so I actually, I actually look forward to that. Nice. And a kind of compressed contrast to Batman Hush and Superman Red Son, it seems to be an actual good DC animated movie, so uh, here's hoping. I haven't seen Superman Red Son, but... It's fine on its own, but it's a story that, that has altered so much from the source material that it might as well be its own thing. So would you say that's the same case with Batman Hush, or is Batman Hush just a bad movie, period? B Batman Hush, well, it's, it's kind of like Batman Hush, but remember, Batman Hush changes basically the entire core of its climax, and that basically basically ruins the entire story when you get down to it. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a topic for the movie itself. Mm -hmm. Ow. Let's cut to the chase. Yeah, because I think we're actually done with the escorting. Yeah, every time you, you clean the room, you get that uh, slow-mo effect. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, just like, just like in the first flight, it's time for the Guardians to reveal the thing that they kept locked for a long time. 
What is it this time? Seriously, much like in much like in most incarnation, the guardians of the universe act like holy and, and almighty. When in reality, we're a bunch of pompous assholes, we constantly do bad decisions. They say they'll get better each time, but they don't. <laughs> it comes to a point where, for God, with specific story, we consider the option of potential planet genocide because it would have benefited the universe on the long run. Oh, let's not forget. In the movie, it was one of their own that became Parallax, technically. Yeah. And then in the comics, it's one of their own that eventually becomes the Herald, well, the original Herald of the Black Flipping Lantern Corps. Pretty much. Oh, boy. And don't even get me started on the new Guardians. <laughs> yes, let's take a bunch of heroes from Earth and have, let put them to a quest for having sex. Mind you, one of those supposed heroes was Pharaonic Man. Uh, this clearly established bad guy, because you don't know. I know, right? Basically, Dreams, you know the character in Batman and Robin who is the scientist that uh, turns Pamela Isley into, into uh, you know, Poison Ivy and then gets killed by her kiss. Oh, I mean, that wasn't this intention, but yeah. <laughs> he, his character actually in the comics becomes an actual other villain called the Ferrari Man. But in Batman and Robin, he just dies. He just him. dies. Just, just be glad because the Ferrari Man is such a terrible villain for that me. That's a, that's a... I movie. mean, I would say maybe the movies could make a better thing out of it, but the movie he was in was Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah, we, we already screwed up Bane. I didn't want them to screw something else. Uh, oh, God. See, what are you talking about? It's not Bane, it's Bane. <laughs> uh, that said, though, if there's one thing I'll give the new Guardians this... They did give us Snowflame, a villain literally powered by... By cocaine. <laughs> crack cocaine. Okay, also I purchased one of the better of the contracts that you can get. I forgot if I will use it uh, in this upcoming fight. But it will be the Gatling Gun. It's very useful for clear the room and damage all the mooks. Anyway, so let's rearrange the symbol into something else, if I recall correctly. I had to use the hammer on this kind of button, but uh, I'm just figuring it out right now. Oh no, alright. First is the, the room that needs to be open. Basically, later on, I need to find a symbol that I need to rearrange into something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm here. What now? We need you to bypass the security replace there. And how do I do that? You must use um, this is a bit of Guardians. interference. Guardians, calms down. Damn it. Well, cred. Remember, at the end of the day, the rings are not magical. They are technically technology, so yes, okay, communication so can have interference. Down. Okay, so switch to your switch to your uh, mobile four G signal. And try again. <laughs> <laughs> you know that is a good point. You'd think the rings would have something like that. Oh, then again, according to Justice League Act of God, apparently, that's not how they work. Joe, <laughs> just, just forget about Act of God, it's such a terrible story. Hmm, that's a curious oh, symbol you got there. That, that's, that's what they should do. Have, like, um, have, have, have two rings. The regular one, which has all their powers, there but a back oh, well. ring as well. This is, this is... On analog or... This is a classic puzzle of uh, rearrange the fig. Each button moves the figure in a position, and you need to press the buttons in the correct order to form the correct symbol. Hmm. I'll tell you what you're talking about. Clearly, Batman has always he's been the best of us. He's always. No. <laughs> he's always it's been the best of us, see, John. See, always. You see, Doug Mollick. The problem is that your plan backfires even by its own uh, methods because, speaking as a Batman fan, uh, the fact that you're literally trying Hold to on. make There everybody... we go. Okay. What an interesting okay. symbol. Mm. Yes. What's going on, Pedro? Sorry. The, the fact that you're trying to make uh, everybody uh, in the DC universe a complete moron just so you'll make Batman look cooler by comparison. No, actually, actually, Doug, you're doing it. You're doing the opposite right now. You're basically cheapening Batman. You're basically say, you're basically implying that the only way Batman can look cool is by turning everybody into a moron. Ring, what is this uh, honestly, amongst all these type of Elseworlds stories that are like uh, 
that are basic that are basically like uh, what if the DC universe got fucked uh, and there was a post-apocalyptic universe afterward. My favorite would be uh, Distant Fires, and even then it's a terrible story. Well, hey, on the plus side, I'll admit Super Saiyan Joker was kind of an interesting concept. Just done horribly and only brushed. It. There we go. All right, time for a boss fight, actually. All right. What the hell? Rain. Oh, yellow light. But what is it doing in the core of the planet? This ring is powered by the green energy of will. That battery empowers the yellow energy of fear. And why would the guardians keep this in their basement? Hmm, if you look over there, there's also the pink light of love, in a very messed up, twisted sense. What the hell? What are those manhunters siphoning? Yellow energy? Oops. Gordon is correct. The green lantern of sector 2814 has located the vault. The Warren transfer. Informant? Oh, there was a there was an informant that called that talked to the manhunters. Uh, but mm. who could it be? Basically, now you have to find two of these at the same time, and uh, the remaining one will give you some information. Basically, they give, give you that booster. And... There you go, let's, let's speed up. Because ah, this, this takes a music. while. I just added at the moment when I record this, I was like, fuck it, let's use this. In hindsight, they probably should use the Airbuster one. Well, from what I recall, you said this one's like your favorite version. Second of it. favorite. The first one is the Turks one. Third is the first phase of the, the, the um, oof, the arsenal. Oh, the one that well, is basically direct orchestration of the, those who fight first. Well, when I said this is your favorite, I meant this is your favorite rendition of those who fight further in the remake. I suppose, yeah, I guess it makes sense because the Turks one just basically includes a, it's a combination of the Shinra theme and the Turks theme. Is this of the remake? Yes, Reeves. This is Arsenal's theme. No, the roof was one. First phase. I should phase. know this one. I played the freaking... played the game for the show. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Oh, this is Rufus's one? Oh, yeah, yes. you're right. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, it is Rufus's. It's weird. It sounded like Arsenal's at the start, but no, it's no, definitely No, remember, Rufus's. Jova, this is the one where Masashi Amazu transforms again into Daniel and then John Williams uh, because <laughs> he just can't resist himself. Anyway. He really does like Let's those cues. Oh yeah, I can see that. But how come puny me stop? Huh. Now let's talk about the informant. This conversation is over. Oh, you're not fun. Our directive, the guardians You know, under different circumstances, people would what probably agree with you, bud. Sore loser. We just saw a robot commit suicide. Who told the manhunters about the yellow energy in the vault? So, Tio, stop me if you heard this before. Someone has a bone to pick with the Guardians and wants them to die. I never saw us, that before. All right, 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 let's try to make this, to discover this situation. So we're only operating at partial power. It's still more than enough. Triangulating that was a dropship destination. They're heading to their home world. Why not? Where did you disappear to, Earthman? Just see this one's ass. That information is not to be also, my god, no, the Guardian's design in this game is horrible. They have a right to know why. It's even worse than the one in the movie. Well, it's more, well, it's more exciting than his voice. True. You see, I fall into the classic trap where having my voice be monotone is automatically somehow classed as being authoritative. Even though it needs charisma to go behind it, and it's not really. Because that was a great idea. No, no one can be trusted with such power. We have seen before how it can be abused. Yeah, one of your own. Don't worry, Jova Parallax doesn't exist in this game. Oh. Oh, Queen Agatha. 
Don't worry, guys. We'll get a proper introduction with explanation in the next part. So unfortunately, we need to split up. <laughs> so yeah, three guesses on who's the foreman, Jova. Gee, I wonder. Considering we only presented a handful of characters and uh, Kilowog can't be. Sinestro can't be because he also is our co partner for the entire game. Who has remained? Huh. Like, Abins seriously. Abinsu's father. Pretty much. Alright, in the next part, we'll travel to Queen Agapo's homeworld and see what the power of love can do. See ya. See ya. See ya.